Now, several local foster families sharing their challenges with CBS2 and lawmakers during the legislative session. A hearing happening earlier this year. Savannah Hankard now shares one of their stories. One family told me their story, a relationship with the foster care system that started smoothly and later turned into a nightmare. When Gail and Shannon Little decided to become foster parents six years ago, they didn't know the first child they took in would be their future daughter. I said, bring her over. We're going to, you know, figure the rest out tomorrow or the next day. And well, it's been now over five years. Shortly after adoption, Gail's cancer diagnosis put their journey on hold, but they were ready to help as soon as she was in remission. She just starts telling me about this little boy that's already in a foster home, but they don't want to adopt. They need a pre-permanency family. But the intention of permanency, the connections they made were strong. He called me mom. This is the day he walked through the door. But after a year and a half full of empty promises and difficulties with the system, he was taken away with two days notice. So every time we looked around the house, it just reminded us of him. So we could take all his pictures down. We had to take all his toys down. Shannon and Gail weren't the only ones grieving. The impact on their daughter is one of the reasons they don't support the system anymore. Our daughter was sad asking, where is he? Where's my brother? Every now and then she still asks about him, saying, I wish I had my brother back. Now, I don't advocate for anyone to go into the system as it is. I tell them to stay away. The difficulties they faced while taking care of their foster son is another reason they tell people to stay away. Along with little to no communication, they say checks were often late or never given. You couldn't rely on it for budgeting purposes or anything or planning activities for the kids. He was a special needs kid. You know, he needs stuff, glasses, hearing aid, all sorts of stuff. Like many foster parents, the lack of transparency and the fear of backlash is something that they dealt with. It felt like whenever she came over, it was an interrogation. It was never a conversation. The little say these problems are why foster parents in Idaho don't last long and they hope to see changes. It would be nice to see legislation in Idaho granting a bill of rights for foster parents. Only 19 states in the U.S. have a foster parents bill of rights, including Oregon and Washington. Each bill is similar in stating their rights to dignity and respect, as well as the rights of input in a foster child's permanency plan and access to department personnel 24-7. The Little say protecting foster parents helps protect those most important, the kids. And the foster system with the kids is not something where you can just press pause and come back to it. Many lawmakers during Idaho's last legislative session agreed that protecting foster kids should be a priority. We've reached out to some of them to see what they're doing about it now, and we'll continue to update you with more information as we get it. I'm Savannah Hankard reporting.